Does salt even matter for steak? And how much salt is too much salt? And am I salt bay? <laughs> salt bay guy do it like this? I still can't figure out how to do that. Jeez. So today I'm gonna pit two identical steaks against each other. One dry brine with salt and one without. So this is not my first time trying this. Two years ago, I made a video called to dry brine or not to dry brine a steak. And I took two ribeyes and I dry brined one and I put the other one vacuum sealed in the refrigerator overnight and then salted it right before cooking. You know, it was really clear, dry brining made a difference, but you weren't convinced. The two steaks didn't look enough alike. You didn't like my choice of steaks. You didn't like the fact that I vacuum sealed it. You didn't like one day. And so you came back and said, okay, let's do it again. So a year later, a year ago, I did another video where I took one steak and I dry brined it for five days and another one for three days and another one for one day for 24 hours that I was used to. And I did one for an hour and then I did one that was just salted right before it went on. But of course, all of those were kept sealed until the test. Now that test came out again, wasn't as clear that there was as big of a difference. Three days might've been enough, an hour got you some flavor, but salting in advance one day, made a difference. Again, you guys were not happy. You were not satisfied. I got comments that said, hey, maybe it's not the salt. Maybe the salt doesn't matter. Maybe the whole act of leaving it open, uncovered in the refrigerator is really all a steak needs and that the salt isn't making a difference in the dry brine process. So we're gonna do it again. So this is the third test. I guess I do this about a year apart, so I'll probably have to do another one next year, but these two steaks, came from the butcher. He cut them right off of the same roast at the grocery store. You can see here this bone, and you can see that's where he cut the bone. It's right there. They were literally right next to each other, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna salt one of them. Nick, to just keep it fair, which one should I salt, one or two? One or two? One, okay. I'm gonna salt steak number one here. For those of you who are new to the whole dry brining thing, the idea here is that we're gonna put salt on the steak and uh, we're gonna leave it uncovered in the refrigerator overnight and the uh, salt is gonna draw moisture out of the steak and that's gonna evaporate in the refrigerator and any extra moisture is gonna get sucked back into the steak with the salt so that the salt now dissolved into the water gets to the center of the steak. And in theory, the scientists tell us that salt is gonna have an impact. It's gonna break down some of the tissues. The salt is gonna have a property of helping to retain water. And that even though the steak is gonna be drier when it comes out tomorrow, the water that it's gonna pull out is water that would have come out during the cook anyway. And it's gonna be better able to hold what moisture happens when it cooks. My theory is that this steak, when we look at it tomorrow, it's gonna to be darker. It's gonna be drier than this steak. I have no idea. I've never left a steak uncovered without salt in the refrigerator. So this might oxidize, it might turn brown. Who knows, maybe it's gonna end up being better. I'm not gonna look at it again until I see you tomorrow in about 24 hours. So I guess it'll be 24 hours for me. For you, it'll be like, that. Well, it's tomorrow and color me surprised. So let's look at these two steaks. Here's the one that we salted. And this looks like a dry brine steak. Like it's very pretty, nice and hard. The fat is popping. It's clearly dried out. It's got a little bit of concave here where it shrunk as the moisture was removed. But look at this one that had no salt. It is also hard to the touch. It's also a little bit concave. It's also darker. The fat's not popping quite as much in the eye, but it is over here in the ribeye cap. Like, I think maybe the salt didn't contribute to the amount of moisture coming out. Maybe the refrigerator. I could be wrong about this. All right, we still gotta cook it. We still gotta see what the difference is, but there's a, there's a chance at this point that I have been leading you astray. Let's go, uh, let's go get the Kamado Joe fired up. All right, so we are gonna set this up for two zone cooking, a left side and a right side. So I'm gonna start, since I've got the charcoal basket from Kamado Joe that has this nice divider, and then I'm gonna put charcoal just in one side. You smell like beef and cheese. You don't smell like Santa.
Okay, so we're gonna let this come up to temperature until the dome is good and heat soaked. We wanna make sure all the ceramics are up to temperature before we start adding pieces in. It's gonna take probably 15 or 20 minutes, so uh, I'll be right back. Okay, feels like we're there. So let's go ahead and get this set up the rest of the way. All right, so we're gonna install the divide and conquer rack. So I'm gonna put a heat deflector over here on the indirect side, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put my grate on the indirect side that we're gonna use for the smoking portion of the steaks. And then here's something I haven't shown you guys before. This is the soapstone, which a lot of people say is their favorite way to sear steaks. So we're gonna set that up right over the fire. Let's close it down and see if we can get it to heat. So I'm gonna take the control tower top, close it down a little bit, close the main air vent down to about one finger. There we go. So as this comes up to temperature, when it reaches about 200 degrees, right, then I'm gonna close it down a little bit farther, keep going, and hopefully we'll be able to stabilize it right about the 250 degree mark. Be back when that's ready. All right, so let's get these steaks ready while uh, the smoker comes up to temp. So I'm gonna use a binder, my favorite binder for steak. If you haven't been here before, is Wagyu tallow. I do make my own usually, but I am out of it. So I guess I need to buy some more Wagyu briskets. So a binder is just a way of creating a surface that spices can stick to before we put them on meat. This isn't really gonna change the flavor that much, but we're doing the same binder to both. But all I'm gonna do for flavoring here is salt and pepper. Now this one's already got salt because we used it for the brine. So I'm just gonna salt this one first so that we get about the same amount of salt, even though it's not gonna absorb overnight. Now both of these are going to get pepper. So I'm gonna use the pepper cannon from Man Kitchen here. This gives me great fresh cracked pepper. I've got it set to about a 16 mesh. Nice thick grains of pepper. Try to get about the same amount on both. And we'll get some on the other sides here. I bet you the smoker's up to temperature. I'll meet you at the grill. All right, here we go. So the standard reverse sear is a process where we're gonna smoke these up to about 115 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we'll sear them off. So we're gonna put them together here. Now I've got some temperature probes that I'm gonna put in here. The steak with the salt here, I'm gonna put this thermometer in. I'm gonna get pretty close to the center. And this thermometer that has a blue ring on it, I'm gonna put in the one with no salt. If you don't recognize this, by the way, if you're new, this is the Chef's Temp Quad X Pro. I've used it in a couple of other videos. New partner of the channel. It's a quad channel thermometer that I can use to keep track of food and the great temperature and the cooker so I don't have to stand around. And it's got this cool remote that uh, just connects to it via Bluetooth. So I don't have to be standing here next to the grill watching, measuring steaks, etc. I don't have to open the grill until they're ready. So I got the alarm set for 115 degrees on both steaks. We'll be back when we hit that. Okay, one of these has reached 115 degrees. It's this one that does not have the salt. The other one's right behind. So like with the difference in rate of cooking being so close to each other, I think that we've got some proof that the same amount of water came out. We now have two steaks at 115 degrees. I'm gonna pull this one. This is the one, remember, that we salt brined. Now, we're gonna get this thing up and hot. We're gonna do what's called inferno mode. So for inferno mode, I'm gonna close it down. I'm gonna open my control tower top all the way. I'm gonna open my bottom vent all the way, and I'm gonna try to get that soapstone up to 500 degrees. In the meantime, I'm just gonna cover these, gently tent them to let them rest. Okay, a couple of notes before I taste. First of all, salt brine 
non salt brine over here or air brine, what, it's not really a brine, whatever, there's no salt. I didn't get the sear as hot as I wanted, so I'm gonna have to figure that out on the Kamado Joe, how to get that soapstone hotter. So I didn't get like a super dark Maillard, but I got a good sear on here. And you can see two steaks done pretty much perfectly. And they're just as moist. So I think that we lost the same amount of moisture from both. So the question's gonna be, did the salt get in here and break down the fibers? and the muscle fibers to make this more tender, or did it not make a difference at all? With uh, salt brine the way I've done it every time for years. Moist, tender, yummy, exactly what I expect. All right, brining with no salt. Also perfectly cooked. It's tougher and it doesn't have as much flavor. You can see when I pull on this, it's not coming apart, it's holding on. It's a tougher piece of meat. Whereas when I do that here, look what happens here. Like look how the muscles broke, that's the salt, right? And then the flavor of the salt got all the way to the center. So salt dry brining is the right way to make a steak. Salt does make a difference with steak. If you like this video, check out this video here where I tested how long to dry brine, that whole five day, three day, one day, one hour, and one minute. And if you've already seen that video, Check this one down here where I did a test to see what's the best way to sear a steak because I tested a bunch of different ways. You might be surprised at the results. I'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.